That's a truly silly deck for Storm of Steel. Silent is definitely one of our less well-performing characters overall. But that doesn't mean she won't succeed. Hmm. We already had a curse for money star options here. Guardian as a rack boss is definitely encouraging. Could take four elites this act, although I really doubt it. Much rather do something like two fires and a relic and then fight three elites, including the burning elite. That's pretty juicy. Could even go for one more fire. This is looking good. So, curse for 250 gold or remove a card. Probably it. I don't see... We could go Nyao's Lament, try to get a free elite here, although it's not very reliable. Don't think that's worthwhile. I think I'll let the uh, prediction timer expire here before we start making any actual choices. Give uh, this much and no more information to our betters. Lock in. Is it going old soul? Yes, just ghostly armor last run. Very fun run, though. Stupid wacky, as usual. How do I decide whether I'm going to boss swap? Usually... It's uh, a question for me of how, how divergent from normal do I want my run to be. I think the best boss swaps are ones that have flexible pathing, where you can take lots of elites early, or you can avoid elites and take rest sites instead. This is a pretty decent situation for that. Uh, I tend to dislike swapping on Silent, because I, I really dislike giving up Ring of the Snake. Um, and dislike swapping on Watcher a little bit, just because I think she's so consistent without the boss swap. But I think Ironclad and Defect especially benefit a lot from the swap. So does Silent, truthfully. Being able to get more energy from your boss relics is very important for this character. And uh, four energy Silent with a bunch of backflips and acrobatics feels very comfortable. Los Riantos, thanks for 46 months. Here it comes. Hey, well done, Sky Illusion. Grats on that first Runic Dome win for A20 Heart. All right, bets are locked. What's our starting curse? Shame. Shame is back. We have shame just like before. Hmm. Interesting. We remove that immediately, or do we try to keep it? Fun questions. We definitely suffer for having it in the short term. Hmm. Joke's on me, I'm frail anyway. Two strikes to neutralize, one time. Bummer. Okay, so we take a little bit of damage there, as uh, pretty much a direct result of the shame curse. Get out of the first fight with a cunning potion. 
I don't love deadly poison, but I suppose I'll take one here. Yeah. Mmm, frozen eye. Interesting. Lots of nice things in this store. Reserved insect into four elites, also uh, pretty dang tempting. That would let me dodge the second shop, too, right? If I go for an elite instead of a... Hmm. I dig it. Definitely gonna buy this. Elites have 25% less HP is glorious. Any love for Swift Strike? It's quite good, especially along back alongside Backflip here. Decent little early game damage card. If I was going to keep the shame, we'd go maybe Swift Strike Backflip. I'm thinking currently Shame Remove Backflip. Might leave us a little bit light on damage, but that's what the insect is for. Frozen Eye, Frozen Eye Backflip, also very valuable. Frozen Eye would make managing the... Shame Curse a lot more manageable. There's no shame in removal. <laughs> I like that. Frozenine's definitely a very valuable relic. The more card draw you have, the better this is. Helps you sort out which which draw order you're experiencing so that you know what plays to make each turn. You know whether you want to draw or not. I certainly do like getting rid of that shame curse, though. Probably is just backflip frozen eye. Let's do it. Take the eye. The all powerful eye. And then we know what we draw every turn. Even if it's bad. Easy peasy, no problem. So here I know that I can backflip into shame and then discard it with survivor. That's kind of cool. That's masterful stab a lot in the early game. Gonna be a bit awkward versus guardian. I don't want quick slash though. Accuracy is just nonsensical. Need some damage. Look up to three times here. Ugh, heck. Very interesting. We just full block this turn. Next turn, we neutralize backflip. And then, if we need to, we can cutting potion. For 18 damage, we should have a kill. Let's just double check. You're at. Yeah, yeah, that's a kill guaranteed. Good. Thank you, Cunning Potion. Get a pretty good relic here, Thread and Needle, four plated armor. And I think we should take a dagger throw. Draw one, discard one, very valuable with the Frozen Eye. Helps us deal with his shame. Adds to our damage output in the short term. Looks pretty good. That maneuver is kind of interesting with Frozen Eye as well. We know if we need the extra energy or not. But I don't think we're in a position where it's going to make much of a difference yet. Now that we've gotten through that first elite, I think we're somewhat in the clear for a little bit here. 
Life should be a bit simpler. Could have done a little bit more damage to this louse. Does not matter though. Leg sweep. Quite a powerful block card. Not exactly good damage, but a nice way to keep the masterful stab stabbing. Bane at least works with the deadly poison. Could be an acceptable attack card. Next fight is either Sentries or Legavulin. Like the leg sweep a lot for both of those. As for our upgrade. Probably want to upgrade Deadly Poison to be able to defeat Lagavulin. Sentries will actually be quite difficult. Although, thanks to the low HP, they won't be too bad. Let's see what Relic we get as well. <clears throat> upgrade the Shame, if only. Turn it into Pride. Oh! Well now. That's quite good. Tough bandages give us three block for each card discarded. Adding block now to survivor and dagger throw. As well as making various other cards that are already enhanced with Frozen Eye uh, better as well. I don't actually have to charge headlong into an elite here. I could rest or something. I think we'll be okay. Let's go to this elite now. Perfect. So next turn we Survivor Defend Deadly Poison. That's going to block for 11, 16, perfectly, 20 block. I'm going to use the Leg Sweep to remove Artifact from one of the sentries here. Got Masterful Stab, Dagger Throw. Now we just want to kill one of them as quickly as possible here. Um, this is 21, 24, 30. Actually, no, we want to do this. Check this out. Poison you. Full block. Kill you. The well, next turn looks like it could be a bit odd here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Not good. Guess we did want to put the damage on the front one after all. Bummer. Next turn's fine. Bottle is quite good, especially again with Frozen Eye. Makes Deflect look pretty reasonable. Caltrop's also somewhat tempting. Yeah, now the additional elites are looking pretty scary here. Hmm. Also, our potion chance is at 70% here. It's really quite uh, unfortunate. Kind of wondering about this Deflect. Caltrop's. Solid-ish. We don't need either of these for the short term, though. We skip all this. I think is the answer. Take an event or not. Gremlin Nob's gonna kill us without a potion. We need a potion. Perhaps we'll do something like this. I 
Ja. There's a potion. Okay, now we can take a gremlin knob. Dash is quite nice, as is dagger spray here. Take the burning lead on. Put the strength potion. Tough call here, actually. Really dig the dash. Yeah, we just did the sentries fight. So tiny. All right, we get to do a little bit of math here. I'm going to bust out the calculator. Uh... Here's here's one of the amazing benefits of Frozen Eye. We get to know in advance whether or not we need to use Strength Potion. So let's just do some quick math here. <clears throat> so turn one, we have all of this. Turn two, we're going to draw these. Discard one. Turn three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So it's probably turn one... Strike, Deadly, Neutralize. Turn two, Dagger, Throw, Leg Sweep to full block. Turn three, Dash, Masterful Stab. So let's look at the damage for that. We do nine this turn. Seven plus six plus five. Plus nine. So 27 this turn, leaving it at 40. 40, mu uh, well, no, no, not at 40. 27 is the deadly... Ah. 27 after 3 turns, excuse me, plus an additional 9 from Dagger Throw. And then we draw this. We can do an additional 28. So 27 plus 9 plus 28. That says 64 damage. We are apparently three short. Hmm. Interesting. That means we can potentially trade a little bit of health to keep the potion. If we use the potion, we perfect this fight. That's the good news. We definitely want to play another card here for bottle too. So on turn three, the Gremlin already has two strength. They're going to get three more from playing Leg Sweep. Um, actually, what if I, on turn two, since we're just a little bit short, what if we don't play the leg sweep? What if we do dagger throw, strike, defend? Can we keep the potion? Let me just double check here. <clears throat> so, reset the math. Seven plus six plus five. Plus nine, turn one. If we do 15, turn two. This is not going to be zero cost anymore, is the problem. Uh, so we probably have to do 21 instead. And then, on this turn, we can deal 22. Brings us to 70. So we're going to block 7. Knob is going to attack for 
10. So we take three, keep the potion. I'm okay with that. So we have four block from the plated armor, three block from tough bandages here. And then we go masterful stab dash. Keep the potion. Get a paper crane, which makes that leg sweep very exciting. And a backstab, a backflip, or a reflex. All of which are amazing here. Backflip, probably the best of the three. Although I could definitely see backstab really helping with one more elite here. Uh, we are going to fight this last elite, by the way. It's going to happen. Reflex isn't sort of nice with tough bandages. You really need the stuff that discards things first, which we don't have. Already got a lot of block, right? Yeah, let's take the backstab. That'll help in this fight, too. So I play the dagger throw, we draw the dash. I don't want to do that. Okay. Right, we just go. Is Dagger Throat Dash next turn going to be enough? Do Dagger Throw Survivor. That should be enough. And then we want to play four cards here. One, two, three, four. Here come the potions. Escape plan. Very nice with Frozen Eye. We always know whether the top card is a skill or not. Hell yeah. Um, I think these potions are actually not as... Uh, the poison potion is not as good as the other potions. Although poison potion against Guardian is actually kind of useful. It's also pretty good against Legavulin. We're worried about that fight. So we maybe want Explosive Potion, Poison Potion. Poison Potion to deal with Legavulin and Guardian. Explosive Potion for sentries, or if we don't encounter sentries for Act 2 means keeping the strength potion was the wrong choice. That's funny. All right. I'll still play that way. I'll still play that way. You stinky sentries. Yeah, this will be a lot easier if we just explosive potion them. I'm just going to do it. We'll just glug. dead next turn. And then Ink Bottle on 9 also. Good. Okay, nice and easy final Elite Bite. We get a Boat Thingy. Now we have 10 Blanc on turn 1. Very good for Act 2. Really good Relic so far in Act 1. Lachetsu's here to hit once per skill in hand. It's kind of neat. Sucker Punch with uh, Paper Cranes, also just quite good. Hmm. So our relics are fantastic, but the actual cards in the deck are not very good at the moment. 
that's our main issue. Gooseberry, thanks for the two full years of support. Can't believe the tech managed to get through the route. Again, the, the relics are, are putting in a lot of work, especially thread needle tough bandages, providing relative to act one, huge amounts of block, like seven or 10 free block per turn. And that's plenty. Get Calc Gamba f next fight from the Guardian? That would be quite a find. Maybe there'll be a Calc Gamba plus in the first Ricard reward of Act 2. That'd be sweet. And we do need more attacks. I might have to desperation click this sucker punch. I think the Paper Crane makes it good enough. I also think we might need to sleep before Guardian. Although... We have a lot of ways to up our block. Now we can we can eke out an upgrade here. I think if we're willing to use the poison potion, we can. So what do we upgrade? Probably a weak source, neutralize, leg sweep, or sucker punch would be my candidates. Jackstonian, thanks for the three months of the prime sub. Manifesting two calcambas and a tingsha. Please do it. I'm going to upgrade Neutralize here. Actually, wait, no, I'm going to upgrade Leg Sweep here. Yeah, Leg Sweep. Not Neutralize. Okay, Deadly Poison's a little ways down. I see. Can... Full block next turn, looks like. Looks like that's what we're doing. I can do that. Uh-oh. 36. How are we ever going to block for 36? Oh, well, that's a much easier number. Just full block it. Easy peasy. Uh, being frail next turn sounds great, actually. Uh, and I do want to draw a deadly poison next turn, so let's backflip too. Bonk. And now we're going to poison you. For most damage, I should play Strike Masterful Stab. I think what I want to do, though, is have Ink Bottle next turn, not draw this Survivor. So I'm only going to play one card here, the Masterful Stab. This is good next turn. Still weak next turn, so we can do Backflip, Defend, Deadly. This fight's going well. Second application of Deadly Poison really gets the damage going. Be weak forever. draw one card off the ink bottle here. Next turn I want to draw Survivor Shame and discard the shame, so let's just ink bottle. Not draw shame here. And then we can leg sweep deadly poison next turn. Just like that, we've got a perfect fight. Easy peasy. G. 
GG. Okay. We don't get a potion, so our aggressive potion use in Act 1 uh, ended up not... Not going all that well here for us. That's okay. Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. Hmm. First, Venom, Storm of Steel. Discard your hand. Add one shiv. And get three block for each card discarded. Interesting. It's a way to do damage and block at the same time. It's definitely got some utility to it. Works really well with a bunch of relics that we could find from here, although we don't have any of them right now. Shuriken, Kunai, Ornamental Fan, Dead Branch, that sort of stuff. And Venom would be a slow, gradual way to scale. I don't love it that much. I don't love Burst uh, that much either. Let's try this, but I'm a bit iffy here. Storm of Steel does get better if we find, say, another Runic Pyramid or a myriad of other things from the boss relic here. Dripper Dome Tiny House, huh? This actually seems like a very good Coffee Dripper deck. Why is Coffee Dripper favorable here? Well, Coffee Dripper is extra energy in exchange for being unable to heal. In order for Coffee Dripper to be good, you want to avoid taking chip damage in most combats. So you need consistency, good block, and a good turn one. We have extra draws and extra block on turn one. We know exactly what our draw order is going to be. We've got lots of good blocks. We've got relics that are helping us block. And Paper Crane makes enemies deal dramatically reduced damage. It's actually pretty hard for us to take a hit from anything at this point. And so I think Coffee Dripper is a very good way to get some more energy here. Welcome. Currently, we don't have a way to heal ourselves, but that is actually not a problem at the moment. I think we should continue to be a little ambitious with our pathing. Although, shop after the Elite, huh? Hmm. We need some potions. Any tips for pathing strategies in Act 2? Act 2 pathing can be pretty tough. The combats in Act 2 can really wear you down, but at the same time, you need them to get more card rewards and potions that can keep you going. Upgrades are definitely uh, very valuable in this act. Rest sites are often needed for healing, so finding fires that are positioned in such a way as to potentially give you upgrades can make a big difference. Actually, re-looking at the map, I see a path I like a bit more here. Upgrade shop, upgrade, then fight the elites. This path, this is the path, yeah. Two chance at Thwack as well here. Ooh, I like this. So three upgrades, then we fight some elites. Excellent. Excellent. What is Thwack? Thwack uh, is what I colloquially refer to a particular event known as the Colosseum. Here. This can only appear on floors 27 through 31 of Act 2. You're ambushed by a blue slaver and a red slaver. If you win the fight, you can take a second fight against a Taskmaster and a Gremlin Knob. Win that fight, and you'll get two relics and a hundred gold. Obscenely rewarding. We call it Thwack because the opening line of the event text is Thwack. Thwack! 
You were knocked unconscious. That's how the event starts. Finding this event and successfully winning the combat can be a huge difference maker to a run. Die first, mugger scum. Nerd. Let's see, 13 means you die to this, so let's just weaken you. Frozen Eye sure is nice. Four energy sure is also nice. Fear the wrath of my storm of steel. Shivtacular. All right, those nerds are destroyed. Booth work. In order for a block-centric deck like this to really work, you'd ideally like some way to scale the block, improving the amount of block you get per block card. Footwork is the way to do that. We'd love another backflip too, but this fo footwork is far more important to get first, I think. Footwork a much uh, rarer card to see. Oh, the bird nerds are here. We were warned about these. Actually, not too concerned, though. Let the bird nerds be destroyed. Get thee gone. Poison you. We can make one zero damage. Might as well actually just do more to this bird, huh? So we can die to two strikes next turn. Again, I think we'll find that basically nothing can really stand up to us with this deck. Krakala. I can win without playing another card here. No such luck. Both dodge roll and expertise if they were upgraded. Without an upgrade, they're a little underwhelming. This is an okay expertise. We'd rather just skip cards here. Expertise does have some nice interaction with Frozen Eye. Upgrade all strikes and defends. Ooh, defend upgrades are very valuable in a deck like this, especially with footwork. That said, getting cards out of this deck also very valuable. Something we're going to look to do more and more as we go further into this run here. But 10 upgrades sure is a lot. Still don't think I want to fight this elite without uh, potions. Potion chance has continued to be unkind to us. Yeah, it's kind of like a free footwork-ish. 
Except we're actually looking to enhance the block of backflip and escape plans, so it's not really a free footwork at all. I think this deck really wants less basic attack cards in it. I'm going to go with the remove line here. Even though that is a, ten full, a full 10 upgrades. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not feeling it. Not for this sort of deck. Hmm. This is not good. Oh, this is not good. There's no weakness coming up? Oh boy, this is bad. Shoot. Next turn we get to backflip defend three times. Ew. So snake plant's definitely going to do damage to us. Doesn't seem to be a way around that. Shiv don't, don't really do any damage. It's just three blocks, so might as well. that strike, but that's not very good. Could play Deadly Poison instead of Defend here. I think we'd rather get the 3 health. I think we take about the same amount of damage anyway. Once we weaken the Snake Plant, it's no longer really a threat. Easy. Yeah, not, not that bad, all told. I would have preferred that we not take any damage, but this is fine. Mm, should have played the Deadly Poison, though, I think. Uh, let's actually have Storm of Steel for the correct turn this time, so that we can use the bandages to block. Oh yeah, we actually just full block this. Yeah, no problem. Didn't think we were under threat here. Concentrate. Discard cards to gain energy. And block. I don't actually have the ability to get the cards into my hand to discard in the first place, though. This is not as good as it looks. Might prefer a Predator here for the next turn card draw, especially with a Frozen Eye. But without an upgrade, it's kind of below curve. I do think we need it. Hello! Pleased to beat you. Night night. Chance at 80%. We're 
offered it. We could have had two concentrates. Uh, how about a terror to make our attacks do more damage? Since it's zero cost, it's very easy to add to the deck. No problem here with a free upgrade on it. It's going to help our attacks stay relevant through the rest of this act. Uh, very good for taking down Champ, who is currently a very big obstacle to this run. The Crippling Cloud is worth considering, but I don't think it's as good as the Terror here. Love footwork first. And the shop says there's another backflip for us. Ornamental fan could be a block source. If we're really desperate, I wouldn't say we are really desperate, but if we're even moderately desperate uh, as a way to get through the champ here, if discovery is a, a very effective way to do that. Chat like an eviscerate here. I'm not convinced that it's very good. <laughs> Again, encourage you to evaluate eviscerate with the cards we actually have, not the cards that we want to have. We don't actually have discard cards. We just want to have them. Can I afford card remove, discovery, backflip, and a potion? If I don't remove a card, it was foolish to remove at the event, that's for sure. 57, 59, 89 equals 280. Yes, we can afford all that. How often do I pick prospective cards that would be good if other cards were in the deck? Very rarely. When considering prospective cards like that, the most important thing to think about is how many different other cards can complete the combo you're trying to assemble. If there's only one, then you're setting yourself up for failure. But if there's five or 10 or more potential combo enablers, that's when prospective cards can be worth it. And Dark Embrace is, is a great example of, of what I'm talking about. Dark Embrace is a great prospective card because there are 30 plus cards in Ironclad that say exhaust on them, so the potential to find interactions is enormous. But if you're picking Entrench hoping to find just Barricade, that's only one card, one rare card, and you're not going to be able to find it. Chemex not bad here, actually. I like Chemex on, on, on Silent, but I think we need more immediate answers. What is this deck trying to achieve? Currently, just getting to the next floor. Killing an Elite in the next couple of floors, specifically. Kill this elite in two floors. We we leave the shop, we get two upgrades, we fight an elite. Not the worst thousand cuts, I guess. And probably explosive potion, yes, yes. Could also take a fight instead of a uh, upgrade here. I don't think we're looking to do that. Kunai? Meat on the bow. Actually, love it. That's great news. Sure. Sure, meat on the bone. Definitely meat on the bone. You know what? I'm going to preemptively upgrade this. This is our champ solution now. Storm of Steel upgrade makes the shivs upgraded, so it adds essentially two damage per shiv. Let's see, Terror's way down there. Hopefully this Book of Stabbing has less than 100 hit points, so not concerned. Looking at the Frozen Eye there to determine whether or not to backflip. It's pretty good. Storm of Steel and Deadly Poison. I like that. 
I'll draw one, two, three, four, five. Uh, it'll do, actually. Next turn, it's only attacking for like 16 or something. So that does full block. Or we can backflip Deadly Poison, draw the shame. Then we would draw one, two, three, four, five. That is a better draw. Okay. Thanks, Frozen Eye. Calculated Gamble. Cute. Let's go take a Poison Stab here. That was easy peasy. Now we have a mummified hand, giving us a free card in hand whenever a power is played. And we can choose again between backflip or escape plan. And I think with the frozen eye, we want another escape plan. Excellent. Event number one. It's the nest. A long line of hooded figures offer us a ritual dagger. Usually like the Ritual Dagger if it's offered to you early in Act 2. This is way too late to be very good, so we'll take the 50 gold. And I am going to take one more event here. Chance at Shame, Chance at Black. It's neither. It's a library. Let's read and choose one of 20 cards to add. There's quite a few things we could take that would be good here. Yeah, well aid plans would be nice. Fume's okay. Concentrates back. Third escape plan. Eviscerate, Bouncing Flask. Again, note the lack of discard effects, other than maybe Prepared. We could take an upgrade Prepared. That's actually pretty good. Let's do that. Hello. This is why we bought the explosive potion. Let's just use it. No need to overthink it. Just do it. Discard Storm of Steel, bring it back. The power. Question card and a fruit juice, okay. There's acrobatics for us. Don't actually have a use for blade dance currently, right? That's right. Still think we upgrade the prepared. Because discarding one more card means three more block. Because the acrobatics is only draw one more. Gonna be a weird fight against champ. Paper crane and our block relics make it very easy for us to stay alive. But what we don't have at the moment is damage scaling beyond just playing deadly poison over and over again. So we're going to be dependent on this discovery to make powers or scaling cards that work for us. That's why we upgraded the discovery, so we can use it multiple times. Extra copies of footwork sound like the right step, a step in the right direction here. Definitely. We definitely want to chip away at Champ's health, essentially wherever possible. Don't know that we can afford to prolong this fight a lot. Are 
Already maxing out his Batella size. That could lead Champ to buffing Strength a bunch, too. Which we would strongly prefer not occur. Discovery is the bottom card. We're not exactly happy about that, either. going. Two. Now we can draw to the leg sweep now. the first strength buff. It's a bit concerning. So we just add more poison. Maybe we want a poison potion soon? Just try to rush Champ down. We can time the split such that we bring Champ below half without being vulnerable. That'd be really helpful. Yeah, this is Heavy Slash, actually, so... This would be a great time to bring Champ under half here. We do enough damage. So that brings Champ below half. That's good. It means he'll purge debuffs next turn. So this poison potion be reasonably 12 damage here. More likely to be useful after Champ clears debuffs, I think. We're definitely going to have to block next turn, but we can do that. Especially with Predator here on top. It's going to be really good. Excellent. We draw seven. Twenty six by two. Hmm. How do you block that? Oh, you make it a very tiny number. Thirty. That we can do. That we can do quite easily. Oh no! Anyway. The power of the paper crane. Draw my leg sweep. I'm also not thinking we need this poison potion anymore. Seems like all is pretty well. It's been shuffling without deadly plus. That's also fine. Eighteen. Next turn, Champ will use another Execute. We'd like to kill before next turn. Maybe I should have used this Poison Potion. We don't do damage that quickly, do we? Okay, you know what? Don't... Don't throw here. Do use it. 
Just do it. Simply make it so. Choke next turn, which will help. Maybe I'll kill with that. So let's see what this creates. No matter what, we're never dead here. Helps a lot, actually. Get him. GG. And yes, that poison potion did make a difference. Here's our chance. Double Storm of Steel. Or one of these many other better options. I think we know all, well, I think we all know what's going to happen here though. We're here to master the difficult cards of the spire. Let's actually do it. This challenge was my idea, right? <laughs> That's right. It's my idea. I can't ignore my own challenge. That would defeat the whole point. So, we are going to risk it for the biscuit here. I am going to take another storm of steel over adrenaline, alchemize and nightmare, all of which could be win running on their own. Uh, line of thinking here being that we already have Spectacular Relics and the Question Card, which should allow us to uh, build some more late-game solution, hopefully. But we're definitely not sure how to deal damage to the end-game bosses of this run just yet. Did we pass on a Caltrops earlier? I feel like we did. Anyway, here's Runic Pyramid. That's going to make things a lot easier. And gonna make the Storm of Steels genuinely useful, too. There was a Caltrops before Guardian. That's what I remember. I'm deeply regretting not taking it. I think a Caltrops would be very helpful right now. Have you no shame? Caltrops useful in the third act. Yes, I think it is. More than you'd expect. Quite a bit more than you'd expect. Ink bottle is so much better now. Leg Sweep Plus. Pretty fantastic. So is Piercing Whale, Piercing Whale with Runic Pyramid. Um, but I think that Leg Sweep Plus is even more premium, truthfully. With, uh, with Paper Crane? With Paper Crane. <laughs> Membo card is here. Concentrate is back. There's the Caltrops I was begging for a moment ago. I'm definitely going to buy that. Caltrops can certainly make a difference here. Dark Shackles also exceedingly lovely. Although I can't do membership card and... Oh, I can do membership card and Dark Shackles. Can't do membership card and Dark Shackles and Caltrops. 
and the Keltrops is the more important pickup here. By quite a bit. Works great with the uh, Mummified Hand, too. Can't believe how many pyramids we've seen. Is Concentrate a good card yet? Sadly, no. You want it to be, but nope. Don't have the draw for it, even still. Deadly there. Should deadly poison the spiker though. You die. Finale. Hmm. It's not this. I don't think it's any of these. Transient. Not a big deal, actually. Storm of Steel surprisingly good in this fight. Let's do this. The power. <laughs> the ultimate hand. I like it. Thanks, Frozen Eye. Punch, that was foolish. All right, final turn. Buttery smooth. Okay, now we want one of these two. Tactician plus or reflex. I can probably tactician. Hmm. Only because of the free upgrade, actually. They're both pretty good. The Storm of Steels make the reflex arguably better. Tough call here, actually. With I think with the tough bandages, we want to get more cards in hand more consistently. Stick reflex. Stick reflex. Okay, and what's our path currently? Mm 
want more upgrades. Reflex upgrade, Caltrops upgrade, both very important. Got a recall, too. So we should visit Max Fires 3. As well as Elites here. Do we want more events? Arguably, with a question card, we want more combats. This is a good one. Tough fight. More than willing to use a potion here. We're not that good at this fight, but... I'm gonna risk it for the uh, so-called biscuit. Mmm, biscuits. Early terror is definitely great. I'm also not even going to question whether we use the potion or not. We just do it immediately. Hello there. That sure is a helpful card. I play both of these, so might as well discard that Storm of Steel. Plan Caltrops Dash Might as well Sucker Punch And then Gamba? Or is it Leg Sweep here, then Gamba? I think we just Gamba. Set you up to die next turn, or we can reapply poison here. Perhaps better to poison here, Storm to Steel, kill this one. Um, let's see, you're at 21. So Storm of Steel on its own wouldn't be enough. Okay, no, in that case, let's do it this way. We get one more burn in the draw pile, which I don't love, but I think we do damage pretty efficiently here. I'm a spooky ghost. Good. Is that to set a pink bottle a little bit more? Perfect. We score wing boots, allowing us to teleport around, uh, which has a big impact. We can get at least one extra elite fight. Actually, we can probably get two extra elite fights and an extra rest site with these wing boots here by jumping over here. That's fantastic news. Concentrate with a plus. Now looking much better with the actual reflex in the deck and the free upgrade. Finally, we can click on this card and feel okay about it. Also, now that we have Burning Pyramid. Yeah, I could even get uh, extra, extra elite by giving up one of these rest sites. Fight this extra elite instead? That might be worth it. Jump once, twice, thrice. Yeah, we can do a lot of elite fighting now. Repto scary? I don't think Repto is that scary. Since we can split our damage easily with the Storm of Steels. Don't have very good AoE though, it's true. I guess we're about to find out how scary Repto really is. This looks like an excellent turn one though. This 
seems helpful. Rest in hand. Draw four. That'll do for now. Now that's a bit rude. How am I supposed to grand finale when you're doing that? finale this turn. Looks like I probably won't. No, I'm not going to. Alright. Or not this turn, but this rotation through the deck, rather. this though, so let's sucker punch Repto. Storm of Steel. Choke now. Twinge! Thanks for the 30 folk raid. Welcome, welcome, everybody. You're joining us for our continuing Play the Spire Mastery Challenge, where the goal is to beat the game essentially with all of the different cards that exist. Uh, in duplicate required to count for the uh, challenge. So on this deck, we're trying to win with two copies of Storm of Steel on the Silent, which is uh, easier said than done, definitely. But uh, Tough Bandages Relic is definitely making it work. Luminescent, thanks for 44 months. Howdy do. You've not heard of Dark Twinge. Dark Twinge is a wonderful variety streamer. Streams all sorts of roguelite and strategy type games on his channel. wonderful cozy place. Let's see here. Can we kill the Repto this turn? Can't play that Predator, but I don't think I need to. No, we don't need to. <laughs> nice try, Predator. Wow, Corpse Explosion or Piercing Whale Plus? Corpse Explosion definitely helps answer the question, how the heck do we kill things? Specifically, Shield and Spear and uh, Donudeka. Piercing Whale buys us more time, but that's all it does. Piercing Whale is pretty good, that said. We need this corpse explosion. Wish I could take that piercing whale. Well, really do. So many good upgrades here, also.
This, for example, is a fight where the uh, corpse explosion might make a big difference. Although it's a little far down into the draw pile there. Have some stinky. Extra stinky. Oh, right. That was definitely supposed to be using the wing boots. Definitely. Um, right, because I can't use the map marking mod to mark wing boot stuff. Okay, yes, noted. Duly noted. Explode to Keltrops. It's kind of cool, actually. Finisher isn't completely terrible. It is mostly terrible, though. I'm not that desperate. Okay, so we're going to go here. One, two, three. Reflex, definitely. I don't think I need to upgrade the Storm of Steel, so they, they are kind of tempting as a damage upgrade. Kind of contemplating Shop as well. But I can't do all of that, right? No, I can't. Okay. Footwork would go a long way for a deck like this as well. You should stay weak for a long time. Twenty four. Storm of Steel here. Seventy five damage predator. We're not going to work on Time Eater. Rakalkum! This is guaranteed block. We can take another Caltrops here. Stack the Thorns damage even more, or a arguably much needed Piercing Whale.
Two Caltrops is better than one. Let's do it. That could be all of the damage we need. I am going to keep taking Elites here, I think, unless we want to just upgrade Caltrops and Recall. Still could use another uh, footwork. The book card says taking the extra elite's probably worth it. Featherfall TT, which card is the best card in this deck? Discard. little damage. I could take zero if I use the plated armor, but eh. seems fine. Singing bowl, a bit late. Ah, there we go, though. This is what I was looking for. Now that we have two footworks and two caltrops, I think we're ready to tackle the late game. I think we can now win the run. I wasn't confident we could survive with only one footwork, but two, two will be plenty. The feet are working. And that means I'd rather take an event after this elite. Maybe I didn't even need to take the elite, although Corpse Explosion versus the daggers actually kinda hype though. Problem. Grand finale. In a 40 card deck. Kind of interesting. Maybe better for another acrobatics here. Finale is unmastered, it's true. Seems kind of hard to get two copies of. I think we take the Zachro. Thousand Cuts also not too bad. I was hoping we'd see this event. Thousand Cuts not too bad. But uh, with the two Caltrops, I don't think we're going to need it. And uh, Mind Bloom's awesome here. Actually, wait, is this an upgrade all? How many meaningful upgrades do we get? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Hmm. That's actually a lot of upgrades. 
We're at most of our health currently, and we have very, very good blocking game. This is a situation where taking all of the upgrades could really, really have a big impact on how the last bit of the run goes. Finding a boss for a rare relic, also pretty strong here. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to use the max health anyway, actually, because of Coffee Dripper. Don't have any heals coming up. I think this is an upgrade all. Upgrade everything. So all the defends, all the strikes, all the curses, all the caltrops, you name it. It's say it's plus now. And I'm rewarded for not uh, recalling, I guess. That said, Time Eater is going to be a bit of an issue here. Only a little bit. Quite frankly, the less cards we play, the better, right? For the most part, that's true. Time Eater actually takes very substantial damage from Caldrops with those times three hits. Let's see here. Survivor Discard Reflex, draw three. Yeah, I can play four more cards. Joke's on you, I was frail anyway. Thanks to Paper Crane, we only have to block for 30. That's not so hard. Even while frail, we could do that. More thorns. cards we have to play, the better. Look at that health going down. Easy. Stop hitting yourself, Time Eater. It's fine. Foolish, foolish, says the slug. Dagger throw, skate plan, deadly poison, acrobatics, I guess. Fourteen by three, how about eight by three? Easy. Let's have some more poison.
Full blocked. Caltrops, do the work. GG. All right, one boss down with no points of damage taken. Very encouraging. Who's next? It's the Nerd Bird. Greetings, Nerd Bird. Prepare for your destruction. Don't have that many powers to play. Also dead. Nice multi attack. You nerd. We'll patiently wait on the Caltrops until phase two. We could play them in phase one here, but we don't have to. I suppose that's true of this footwork also. We could play it phase one, but we don't have to. I will play the Terror Phase 1, though. So that my life is at least reasonably easy. We just do so much more damage with the whole deck upgraded. It's really quite nice. Essentially all the powers in our hand, that's great news. Meow. One leg sweep is essentially a full block, also. Feels good. Enjoy your thorns. Hello.
should be dead to thorns, so all we want to do is set ink bottle higher if possible. Possible, which we can do with Storm of Steel. GG. Okay, we're through the bosses. We haven't taken a single point of damage since choosing Mind Bloom, and I think that might continue to be the case. We deal 2722 to the beating heart of the Spire. Hmm. Oh. It's cute. Lots of good things here. I like Ancient Potion a fair bit going into hearts. Master Strategy looks like a pretty good card draw card. War Paint is here. We could use War Paint after buying Master Strategy. The funnel would apply poison to enemies at the start of fights. That's not too bad. So I could do prepared master strategy war paint, for example. Funnel actually makes that big of a difference, although it's nice removing artifact in Spire Spear, Spire Shield. That's pretty important, actually. I don't think the heal hook is any good. I mean, sure, it activates most of the time, but five damage is completely and utterly insignificant. Gambler's Brew is very good. Yeah, actually, I didn't even notice that initially. Gambler's Brew is amazing. I actually don't even think we need the Ancient Potion. Upon review. Most of the value of the Ancient Potion is lost because of the Paper Crane. It's only going to block for, like, 10 instead of the usual 30-ish. So let's lose the Essence of Steel. Take the Gambler's Brew. And I can still afford prepared master strategy war paint. That's just kind of too cool. Let's do it. Upgrade the new cards. Easy. So we still have the shame. Shamefully, it's not really relevant anymore, but we still have it. Corpse explosion, huh? I like it. That's a lot of good cards in my deck. Next turn looks a little nerve-wracking, but only a little bit. I do want to be able to apply Weaken. Spooky. Both acro is free, huh? We're going to Corpse Explode the shield, I think. We might not even do any exploding initially.
turns a bit questionable. Ginger Lala, thanks for 34 months of the Prime Sub. Yay! Today. Let's do like leg sweep dash or something. Uh, we might energy potion here. Not even close to enough. Okay. In that case, yes. Let's energy potion. Like that. Get dash to be free. There we go. Okay. I think I maybe could have done that without the potion, but we're doing all right. Brain's working. Partial. Rain's trying to work. Kunai! Welcome. One dagger throw for the road? Yeah. All right. Storm of Steel Kunai versus the Hearts. It's pretty exciting. That is pretty exciting. I do say so myself. Don't get to corpse explode this turn. That's fine. Might as well play that. So, 1 by 15. This is why we didn't take the ancient potion from the store, because this attack is already essentially negated, thanks to the paper crane. We want to get this Caltrops in place, so we're doing essentially maximum return damage. So we can poison here or try to do Storm of Steel things. I think we should just poison with Corpse Explosion. Turn, we're in very good shape. Storm of Steel, probably next turn or something. Concentrate. Master strategy. There's the footworks. Guess let's go masterful stab footwork here. It's dash free, that's good. Storm of Steel draws a bunch of stuff. Across these three.
defend Storm of Steel should be a full block. I can only play one card, though. I don't want to take any damage here. I'm cool with that. Let's just stop the turn. Get to retain the shivs after all. Poison is not really climbing at the rate we'd like to see it. We have nine dexterity, though, so blocking these attacks should be quite trivial. Steel? Let's do it. That caps damage on heart. More kunaiing next turn. Heart's health is going way, way down. A lot of it is the uh, Caltrops. Everything else kind of just sort of contributing, but not really. Oh. Well, that's one way to win. Alright then. Sure, why not? Grand finale. Challenge me to kill with the explosive potion. How about exact lethal with explosive potion? Hiya! The spicy kill. GG. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.